All right, so this section is uh, section 5.1. Uh, it involves area. So um, the basis is this fundamental principle in calculus. This is a very important thing to take away from uh, what you learn in integration in Calc 1. And that is, as we said, uh, this is evaluated numerically some number. What is this number? This number can be interpreted as the area under this function between these two values. Okay, so that's our, our physical, I guess, interpretation of the definite integral. So what this section does is an extension of this idea. We're going to be interested in problems like this. Um, rather than just have one function or one curve, we're going to have typically two or more. Um, so, you know, you call one f and one g, and we're going to be interested in the area in between. Okay, so a, it's a variation of, of this just kind of definition of the definite integral. Um, these problems are interesting because um, they bring together some different elements from mathematics. You're going to have some algebra, some graphing, uh, understanding of fundamental functions. So they're interesting problems in a way. Um, and this will wrap up Chapter 5. So again, Monday is a holiday, observed. Um, when we come back on Wednesday, we're going to hit Chapter 6, which uh, will probably run about a week. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So, a few things. Um, oops, sorry. Adjusting here. Okay, so a few things. Um, a few notes. I want to do this little exercise for you to make this point. Let's, let's look at this. A very simple function. As simple as it gets, right? And what would this look like? Remember, this is going to be an area. All right, this is just my simple linear function, right? This thing could, can go off. So when I evaluate this, I should be getting this area. All right, so we take a quick look at this. All right, antiderivative, add one, divide, okay? one goes in I get a half negative one goes in I get a half I get zero okay so this is telling me that this area is zero well that doesn't even make any sense because I can see there's some area here so the point is this that areas above the x-axis they give positive contributions in this uh, mathematical context areas below give negative values. They give negative contributions. So what you're getting here is you're getting a half, a positive one-half, and a negative one-half, and they're canceling out. So in this section, we are interested in true geometric area. Okay, so in other words, the result that I would like to see in this section is actually one. This is a half and a half. Okay, so we need to uh, figure out a way to make this happen. So make this note, um, kind of summarizing what I just said. Function values below the x-axis, and in that case that, that would be anything here, right? Provide negative contributions to definite integrals. Definite integrals. Sorry, I need to manage my space a little. That says integrals. Okay, so if we're interested in tr true geometric area, this is kind of an issue. You know, I'm just going to rip this off. Start ripping stuff. Okay, so we're interested. Another note. Make this note. 
determining geometric area, true area. Between, let's say between, and in the last example, you could consider the x-axis as a curve, right? It's, it's, it's um, bounding or um, creating a boundary of two little triangles. Uh, between curves requires, requires uh, all area, all areas be considered positive contributions, positive contributions, OK? So um, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a kind of a sketch thing here to show what um, what uh, how this works. This isn't anything really that formal. So example, I want to know this the area, this area. Okay. Let's just make a nice simple example here. F G. Okay, and again, that's A and that's B, and I'm interested in I'm gonna shade this. This is what I want to know. Well, let's look at it like this. This area can be thought of like this. Okay, what, this would give me uh, the area under F. Okay, that's, that would be the definite integral from A to B, just F. And then what I could do, I can subtract out this piece. So let's say minus, that's G, right? Well, that area would be given by this definite integral. So if I take this area, F, subtract out this area, G, I have the area in between. So it's this definite integral minus this definite integral. And if I know uh, the properties of definite integrals, I can write this as 1. So this area is given by the definite integral of the difference. OK, that may, that, that's pretty clear. Okay, and just another kind of situation, same idea. What well, it doesn't have to look like that. What if I'm interested in, let's look at this. Uh, here's F, and let's say I have G down here. Uh, okay, let's do it like that. A to B, okay? Now I want to know this area. Well, again, let's take a look at, uh, let's do like this here. F. Okay, that gives me this, and again, that's just the definite integral f. And then g, again, remember this is a negative, the definite integral will give me a negative value. If I want that to be positive, how do you get a positive out of a negative? You negate it. So minus a minus gives a positive. So if I take this area, subtract this negative value, I'm actually adding it. So I end up with the same expression. And that's that area. So any combination that I do, I could put F on the bottom, G on the bottom. I'm going to end up with this result giving me the area between two curves. So let's summarize this. This is a nice little formula. This is really the punchline. Okay, we're going to use this. So. This is, write this down. This is our theorem. This is, this is your, your go-to, okay? I'm going to say the area bounded by curves F, we'll call them F and G, So these kind of provide limitations vertically, and we have to have limitations horizontally. We're going to call those A and B. Uh, is given by this. What we just what we just had. 
this definite integral um, f minus g. Okay. Now the key here, this is this uh, needs to be included, where f is greater than g. In other words, this always has to be written as, in plain English, top minus bottom. Okay, so this is this is the formula of the day, right? This is what we're going to use to find area. Um, let's see, kind of a level. First of all, I got to get a drink. Let me see. Uh, we're going to do maybe just like level one, beginner level, kind of Fisher Price problem, just to see the mechanics. Let me pause for a second. All right, I'm back. I've been drinking a lot of lemonade lately. It's uh, crystal light powder. I don't even know if it has any lemon in it, but at least it's yellow. So tastes good. Anyway, see an example. Again, this is um, level one. Right? And I'm going to write this out. There's different wording, but it's kind of all the same. Find the area. We're going to say, and this is what I'm going to say, enclosed. You'll see that word bounded uh, as well. Enclosed by, uh, let's, okay, when you, one thing when you do these, <clears throat> excuse me, you should look at, <clears throat> look at the function and think to yourself, what does this look like? That's my vanilla standard parabola, right? No shifting, no stretching, no anything. And then let's have this one. Uh, this will be a negative x squared plus 2x. So that's also a parabola, <clears throat> excuse me, but with some transformation, specifically the negative tells me it's upside down. So one thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to just make a very crude sketch just so I have a visual of um, what this might look like. So I know That's, my, that's this one, right? And I know this one's upside down, and I'm not totally certain like exactly what it looks like. Uh, I'm not going to go through any sort of plotting of points. I know it's upside down. So I know it has some kind of shape like this, something like that, right? So now I have a visual here. So instantly I can see what? This is the top. I'm sorry, this is the bottom, right? This is my bottom, and this is my top. So I automatically can say this, and I'm going to write this down here. Okay, this area is right, top minus bottom uh, plus 2x minus x squared. And then maybe I just simplify this, right? I got two like terms here. Negative 2x squared plus 2x. Okay, good. What am I missing? I'm missing my A and B. I'm missing my, my limits horizontally, my limits of integration. So this will be between this value and this value. Well, that's not given in the problem. So do I just throw in the towel? No, right? We know how to do this. This is, a, this is an, you know, an algebra one or algebra two problem, what we call points of intersection, right? So we're going to find these points of intersection, that one and that one, and those x values are going to be my limits of integration, right? I'm going to have those, and I'm going to be ready to do a simple definite integral. So I'm going to abbreviate this. I abbreviate a lot. Points of intersection. How do we do this? We set the curves equal. Wherever they have a shared solution, two, we should expect two. Those are going to be my, um, my, my points of intersection, not even the points of intersection, really just the x values of intersection. And that's all I need. So I'm going to set these equal. Uh, what do we have here? Negative x squared plus 2x equals x squared. Okay, so again, just, just to go back to fundamentals, when solving anything beyond a linear equation, your go-to should be factoring. All right, this is quadratic. You could use the quadratic formula. But you want to get everything to one side. You want to factor. We're going to do. We're going to set. You know, in Calc one, we set things to zero all the time. Factoring is your go-to.
okay? So let's move everything. I'll have 2x squared minus 2x. Okay, I moved all this over and wrote it backwards. And then if I, what, a factor of 2x and left with what, x minus 1? Look, all right. So I have x equals 0 and 1. And just, so that's what I have. Just to go back, if I, I don't have to do this, but if I was compelled to, I could refine my sketch. And this brings nothing to the table now. It looks, it should look like that, right? So it's 0 and 1 is where this really is. So this, this isn't, this is kind of a crude sketch. But as long as I have the numerical information, I can finish the problem. Okay, so the setup, this is all about setup. Um, you know, if this is a 15 or 10 point problem and you get to here, you have six, seven points, right? This, this should be a, uh, typically in these problems, the integration is very straightforward. Okay, so this is a polynomial. Um, you know, let's just kill it here. Zeros and ones, we said they're your friend, right? So I got negative two thirds x cubed. Uh, plus x squared. Look okay. So again, the zero is going to zero out. When I pop a one in there, it looks like I have, uh, what, one third? Sound right? Okay. And again, think about, uh, you know, the scale of this between zero and one. That seems very reasonable. If I'd gotten 20 or something, you know, I'd be a little worried. So, oh, does that fit okay? So, again, typically there's two elements of the setup. One is which one's on top and which one's on the bottom. How did I know that in this case? Just because I know the shape, right? There's no way you have two parabolas. There's no way this one can be on top and have an enclosed region, right? It's not going to happen. So I know which one's on uh, the top and bottom, and then I need the... A and B, and those come from where they intersect. All right, that's what it means to be enclosed. So this point of intersection thing is a very common sort of uh, extra element to doing these. All right, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see another one. This one is probably. Maybe I should have done this one first. Okay, what do we have now? Uh, y equals x squared plus 1. I recognize that as a uh, parabola shifted up one unit. And then I recognize this is my vanilla linear function, right? Slope 1 right through the origin. And um, that should be good, right? Oh, let's add this. Let's add... So this one's a little easier because these are equations of vertical lines. So you're kind of being spoon-fed the A and the B here. I should have done this one first because it's easier. So again, let's just make a sketch. All right, my standard line, y equals x. My standard um, parabola. Okay, and then this is obviously 0, and this is obviously 1. I guess I didn't even need those curves. That's 1, 1. Oh, I'm sorry. This is incorrect. Sorry, mistake, 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 mistake. I'm not going back to delete mistakes. I'm just going to roll with it. Sorry about the, the mess. Um, this is shifted up 1. So this should look like... this. Okay, that's why we have this guy here. So this is y, uh, x equals 0, right? This is x equals 1. Right, this, these are equations of vertical lines again. Okay, so that, that's why they threw that in there. Sorry about that. Get rid of him. Okay, so obviously which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. This is, this is beginner level. The, the first one had the points of intersection. Okay, so the parabola is on top. 
the line is on the bottom, and that's the quick setup. So this is this is level one. Previous problem is kind of like level two. Um, maybe I should, if I knew how to edit video, I'd cut and paste. But if I had wheels, I'd be a bicycle. So let's do this. X cubed over three x squared over 2. I'm doing this one next. 0 and 1. Again, they're your friends. The 0 is going to 0 out. So I put the 1 in. I got a third. Uh, I got a half. And I got 1. So if I do these in sixths, what do I have? 2 sixths. It's hard to say. 3 sixths uh, plus 6 sixths. What's that come out to be? 5 sixths? Okay, so let's look at this problem and compare it to the last one. In this problem, I knew which one is top and bottom based on my knowledge of the graphs, right? I know this is a line. I know this is a parabola shifted up one, so I can do a quick sketch. Maybe I don't even need the sketch, but I know which one's on top, which one's on the bottom, so I can write my integrand. And then in this one, they, like I said, they kind of arbitrarily pick uh, the limits of integration. There's, this could have been negative 2, and this could have been 7. It would have, you know, problem's no different. And let me go back to the previous one. What's different here is, once again, I know top and bottom based on my knowledge of the graphs. Parabola, upside down parabola. Here, though, I am not given the uh, limits of integration. I'm not given the bounds horizontally. I know there's an intersection here and here. So I find those through this simple algebra. Okay? Let me um, pause quick. Okay. Uh, I wanted to just make a couple comments. Um, I can access a lot of information about the YouTube channel. And I was really happy to see that there was really good participation in our first meeting. Um, that was really encouraging. So I, I really want to push you to keep um, keep on schedule and keep the participation level up. Also, you know, this is an ex kind of an experiment. I've never done it this this way. And I don't know if I mentioned I'm getting this tablet in like a month where I can write and it comes on the screen. It'll be much more polished, but it's on back order, so I'm not getting it for like a month. So we might get to use it at the end. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is if you have any feedback, constructive feedback, don't hesitate to let me know. Like if the markers, you don't like the marker or you don't like the lighting or if I'm too loud or too quiet or whatever. Um, I, I won't be insulted as long as it's constructive. So uh, anyway, let's get back to the math. Um, let's do one with trig. So look again, find uh, find the area bounded. You, you'll see those two words enclosed or bounded uh, by, and we're going to use just our two favorite two favorite trig functions. And we're going to give specific um, limits of integration, specific horizontal boundaries. So again, let's just maybe throw a sketch here. All right, we know what sine looks like. Let's put pi over 2 here. So I have 0 to pi over 2. OK, so sine looks like this, right? Cosine looks like this. Now, this has two separate areas. So, what you see here is the, the left hand, whatever you want to call this shape, I have the cosine on top. And on the second piece, I have the sine on top. 
So the, there's no way around this. The appropriate thing to do is just to write two separate integrals and add the result. And we'll talk about an alternative uh, in a second, but I'm just going to go right at that. Um, and I, I know this is pi over 4. I know that because I, I know that. And if I needed to, I could set these equal and I would get that as a solution. So the, the left, you know, bat wing is 0 to pi over 4, where I have uh, cosine over on top, cosine minus sine. And I'm going to have to do this. So it's like two little problems in one. Pi over 4. I think I'm going to change markers because this one's it's it's not um, like fine enough. I'm afraid that maybe some of this stuff the, this stuff is hard to read. Okay, so I could go through and do it this way, but we're going to take advantage of something um, without proving it actually, which I probably should do. But we have symmetry here, and I, I hope you believe that. Um, it would be kind of difficult to prove it. We'd have to um, do some do some tricky things, but you could. But I ha what I'm getting at is you have symmetry here. So if I just find this one and double it, I ha th these are going to be the same. That's my point. So I'm just going to find one, and I'm going to double it. Okay. So again, uh, what do I have here? I have sine, right, antiderivative of him, and I'm going to have plus cosine, 0, pi over 4. So I have sine, pi over 4, plus cosine, pi over 4, and then I'm going to have sine 0, uh, plus cosine 0. Okay, so I know these values, right? These are the same. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, minus 0, and minus 1. So that's quite a sight to see here. So if I add these two together, I'm going to get uh, root 2. Right? 2 root 2 over 2, root 2 minus 1. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, and again, that's this one. Right, that's this one. So to get the whole thing, I would double that. So the total area, uh, this whole thing is not equal to this. I hope that's clear. This is equal to that. All right, so the, the total area then would be 2 root 2 minus 1. Okay. Um, Let's look at this. Um, another. Let's look at this problem. Let me write it out. We'll talk about it. Find. <clears throat> I don't know if this is in the homework, but I'm going to mention it. Just find area enclosed by y equals x minus 1 and y, uh, y squared, sorry, equals 2x plus 6. Okay, so this is my standard line shifted down one unit. And I don't think we do enough of this stuff. This is really a function uh, reversed, right? This is a function x of y. So this is a sideways parabola. So this thing would look like something like this. All right, so my area, I'm going to shade this. OK, good enough. So let's talk about if we just go with our standard kind of solution technique with some issues here. Um, If I look at top versus bottom, let me just kind of cut this. I don't want to mess this up too much. On the right side of this, it's clear. The parabola is on top. The line is on the bottom. 
But then to the left of this, I have this strange situation where it's the same curve. So what you would have to do is you'd have to split this in two where this, if I took the square root of each side of this, All right, and down here, All right, take the square root, I have y equals plus minus root of that. I mean, if I got to take an integral with these two curves, you're going to get into a mess. So I want to say you could do it that way. Um, it would be a complete pigsty. So the better way to do this is rather than integrate over x, we're going to switch directions. We're going to integrate over y. So what I need to do is write these as x of y. All right, we're going to kind of flip-flop the roles of the variables. So this would be uh, x equals y minus 1, and this would be x equals, what, 1 half uh, y squared minus 6. Okay, and then in this case, now it's open, like look at it from this perspective, right? I'm going to integrate this way and I'm going to have top, bottom. Okay, so if you're going to reverse the roles of the variable, instead of top minus bottom, it's more going to be better thought of as right minus left. All right, and my limits of integration are, are now y values. Okay, so um, I don't think this comes up in the homework. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I just wanted to mention that. Um, you do the same thing, points of intersection, set these equal. You'd have y equals whatever this is. Let's just pretend it's negative 2 and 2, right? And you would integrate this way. And I have right minus left. So it's, it's the same problem. It's just role reversal between x and y. Um, but I'm going to leave that, leave that alone. Um, the one other thing I want to mention is this. And one of the homework problems that I've um, put out in the past, you have these two curves. You have a cosine, you know, scaled, and you also have a scaled and shifted parabola. So what you have to do is find points of intersection. And I'm just addressing this because this always is asked about and I totally understand why. So if I set these equal and try to find solutions, uh, not in 10,000 years are you going to solve this algebraically. So what you, this is what you call solution by inspection. Um, and really, it's kind of a Mickey Mouse problem. What you're going to do is try to uh, say, where are the zeros for this? Where are the zeros for this? And you're going to see that they match. Uh, in other words, where are the zeros for this parabola? Is it 4x squared? Yeah. Um, and it's going to be plus and minus 1 half. Okay. Well, those just happen to be the zeros for this function. Okay, so if they weren't, you would never be able to do this. So you know what? I'm not even going to assign this problem. Screw it. Okay, I think you have everything you need. Um, again, what is important to do these is knowledge of your basic graph. So just to finish, I want to go through something really quickly that I do in my Calc 1 at the beginning. I hope that wasn't too loud. And I tell them this, you should have a visual library in your head of these functions. y equals x. y equals x squared. y equals x cubed, y equals root x, okay? Sine, cosine, I'm not going to put those, you should know those as well. And then 
um, the absolute value. And last but not least, the what we call the reciprocal function. So these six images should be burned into the back of your skull. Okay, so you, you, you see these in a problem like this, you get a visual of that. And I can see, well, if it's shifted, or if it's scaled or whatever, you don't need to know the exact numerical details, but you want to know the shape. Right? Think back to the first problem I did. I didn't know where that, you know, this thing. Right? I didn't know where these matched up or what it looked like, but I knew what the shapes were, and it allowed me to, to get enough insight to do the problem. All right, so hit these homeworks. You got extra time. I know it's a holiday. You know, it's something we got to deal with every summer in this course. So have a great weekend. Be safe. Do the homework. Email me, and we'll see you on Wednesday. All right? Have a great day.